RTE Radio 1 weather with Aer Lingus. Smart likes a live flat bed and free Wi-Fi. So for great value transatlantic business travel, Smart flies Aer Lingus. The weather dry this evening with some clear spells in the west and northwest. Dry tonight with a mixture of cloud and clear spells. Turning cold with slight grass frost and fog patches. Lowest temperatures of 1 to 4 degrees. We'll be back at 9. The Ryan Tuberty Show on RTE Radio 1. Cecilia Hearn, good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's good to see you. Thank you. Now, I, I know you've probably had that particular haircut for a long time. I'm going to start with the haircut because I'm, I'm just finishing House of Cards, right? And Claire Underwood has a particular haircut yes. that is really striking and has become a bit of a thing. But did she get it from you or did you get it from her? I think I had it before. I've had this about five years now. So oh. she must have copied me. Yeah, it's a, it's a good look though, isn't it? Thank I mean, because it, it, it would have been, what, would it have been... I'm, I'm, I, I know have to be what's going to come. I love careful. this. Go on. Would it have been considered brave initially or mad? Probably, yeah. I think a lot of women wouldn't like to have short hair, but it depends on the quality of your hair. If you really want to get into I do, I do. Do you have good quality hair? I do hair? not have good hair, so oh. the hair had to be cut. That's why it's short. What was wrong with it? For stylish reasons. Um, I'm not a natural blonde. <laughs> and that kind of ruins the quality of your hair. So. Does that, well, putting all that uh, dye yeah. and stuff into it yeah. actually wreck the quality of the hair? Yeah. This is not an education <laughs> for me. Well, you're supposed to. You do treat it and everything, but my hair is just crap. Okay, so now you're just going to go with this uh, this look for I like for it. Now. I'm oh, going to no, stick with this. Yeah. I think it's a great look for you and, and it's super. I, just, I was just struck watching the, the House of yeah. Cards. No, I love her hair. Do you watch House of Cards? I do. Oh, right, okay. Yes, I absolutely love House Cards. What is it? It's, it's, it's so slow and yet vicious. I'm and finding this new season much, much better than the last same, season. I think it's the best of the yeah. four. The last one, yes, it is, actually. Because it's punching all yeah, the time. There's something always happening, whereas the last one it used to be quite slow and then something would happen in the last five minutes. Yeah, and also in the last one there was also some stupid detour somewhere silly, whereas this one seems to be better yeah, track. Yeah, I love it. Uh, what do you think of Claire's style? The kind of I clinical really, cold greys and whites. I so want to see her in a tracksuit and <laughs> slippers or With something. Pizza. I just want to, yeah, everything's so tight and, but I suppose it's perfect for her character. But every time I'm watching it, I'm like, I just love her to wear something baggy, yeah. something loose. Never going to happen. Never <laughs> no. going to happen. You have joined, Cecilia, you have joined the ranks of the young adult authors uh, with your new book called Flawed. Congratulations yes, on you. that. And it's a bit of a detour for you because yeah. obviously the novels that you've been doing have been so popular and enormously um, attractive to so many readers. And, you know, the question I'm asking is, why did you t- decide to head off the beaten track for a change? Um, I didn't decide it, to be honest, and that's and that's what happens with all of my novels. I don't really plan what I'm going to write. It's just mm. whatever idea comes to me. And this idea came to me so strongly that I just had no choice but to write it down. And that's the way my head works. It was mm. really, really powerful. I couldn't get it out of my head. And and I did know from previous previous experience I had written a book called The Book of Tomorrow which was told from the perspective of a 16 year old it was it was a crossover book in America that mm. sold it to young adults and adults so I knew when it came to me this is probably a young adult book because it's from the perspective of a 17 year old um, and I just wrote it I didn't think about oh it's a new age group I didn't kind of question anything I just wanted to write the story for myself. Okay, so you would yeah. have written it regardless of, regardless, of yeah. anything. And yeah. and it just happens that this thing, YA, is it, to, to give it its the abbreviated title, yeah. is, is, is really quite a thing at the moment. I mean, yeah. it's quite new to me in the last year or two, but it, it's become a phenomenon in the literary world. So it's slipped into that category yeah. by, by chance for you as it happens. Exactly. And I'm, I think so many writers who write adult novels are now trying to write young adult novels as well, which kind of could be annoying to some young adult writers. And um, and I was conscious of that. I didn't want to be one of those people that's kind Bandwagoning. of jumping. Yeah, I hate that. I, yeah. I, you know, if anything, I like to go in my own direction and do something different. Um, but I had to write it. And so what my myself and my agent, Marianne, decided to do was send the book to readers and to publishers under a different name. Oh, that's yeah. clever. It was really important to me. I didn't want people going, oh, Cecilia's doing Young Adults. Yay, let's buy it or let's not buy it for oh. whatever reason. Yeah, yeah. And um, I wanted it to be... Um, I wanted to get a really honest opinion. So we did that and we sent it to the publishers and only when it came to kind of negotiation time um, did they find out that it was me. What name did you use? I used the name Eden Kelly. Why? Because Eden was the name of the first um, 
girl who read the book for me. She was a 13 year old girl reader that Marianne uses and um, her feedback was so fantastic. I wanted to honour that. I loved the name Eden and Kelly is my mom's surname. So, How, But even the, 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 the biblical connotations of Eden and a new yeah, beginning exactly. for Cecilia. And, uh, well, yeah. I'm helped that she had a lovely name as well. <laughs> Didn't it? Eden Kelly. Great. OK, so that was the name that you used uh, as, a, as a pseudonym to, to get people interested yeah. in, in the first instance. And, and then this reminds me a bit of J.K. Rowling, who must have been Harry Potter out of it when she wrote her uh, adult yeah. books uh, and sent them in oh, yeah, under yeah. her pseudonym again. But uh, when you got the feedback to say, we love this book and we want to, to publish it, or, or when you were sending in it, at least, were you very nervous, almost like you're sending in your first book again? Or were you yeah. very comfortable with what you'd sent in? There's something about this where I feel like I'm starting again in a way. Um, I've had, this is my 13th novel. and How I old am, are you? Uh, 34. Crikey, go on. So I am very comfortable with writing and yeah. I feel like I've kind of found my way. I'm going to touch wood because anything can happen. But mm. um, but with this, there was a feeling of, like I'm meeting new booksellers, meeting, I have a new editor and a new team in HarperCollins. It's like a new section, new department. Mm. And uh, it, it is very kind of like I'm beginning again. Yes. So, um, Do you see I that as daunting or exciting? Both, actually. Yeah. Re both. Um, it's been really, no, it's exciting. I think and it's good for 13 novels to feel challenged again. As well. yes. I, I don't want to, I never want to feel like I'm writing the same novel over and over again. I always want to, whatever I did in the last book, I kind of go in the other direction for the next book. And, I, and it's exactly what I did for this. I was reading about you before our interview and, and you've got this kind of, this, this not peculiar, strange, probably unfair words, but you, you had this moment in your life when you were younger where you were kind of getting into bands yeah. and singing and dancing and, in other words, quite extrovert yeah. and outgoing things to do, which is utterly at odds with the Cecilia, who I've come to know yeah. in, in the recent years. Very, very shy. Uh, not unconfident, by the way, but shy. Very yeah. different things. Uh, person. So when you were, your audience will be anything from probably 12 to 18 or thereabouts. Yeah. That's for in the initial go. And then people like me will want to read it and say, yeah. I actually love that sort of uh, book anyway. Um, so your 16 year old self, you're pitching, if you like, mm. to. You, you were kind of, were you, were you at that stage the extrovert, Cecilia, or were you shy or were you trying to dance your way out of your shyness? Oh yeah, I think I'm such a contradiction really. I think yeah. there's there's two sides to me. Um, well, there is to everybody, but so there was that performer in me and then very much liked to, I was still writing at that time. You know, I would go off on my own and I'd write, write a few things for myself and not mm -hmm. show it to anybody else. Um, but even when I was performing, I would have been the most nervous performer. Do you know? Like, and before I went on stage, I would have been terrified where everyone else wasn't. So, but I think when it comes to me, if if I find something that I'm really passionate about, that inner confidence just makes me want to do it, regardless of shyness or yes. Um, I, and that's the thing about passion, regardless of the kind of person you are, it drives you to do whatever you want to do. So you just keep going? Yeah, yeah, because I enjoy the doing it. <laughs> um, I, like I write because I love writing and, yeah. and whatever comes with that is, it's, 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 it's not the most important part. The most okay. important part is writing. Is the getting there yeah, in, yeah. in the first part. Um, you, you were talking, I was at a talk that you were giving as a panel on, <laughs> on Saturday at the uh, Mountains to Sea Festival and you talked about uh, one of the things you love to do, which is very hipster of you, uh, which is uh, colouring books. <laughs> love colouring books. And, and I, was, I was struck by your love of colouring books in the sense that I was kind of puzzled by it because I don't quite understand what this new love for adults to, to colour things in is or what is it ther it's, therapy or yeah but I love monotony you see the thing <laughs> you love monotony no uh, with the occasional um, joy um, <laughs> I just really like yeah my husband always jokes that I'd be really happy working in a production line you know I just love like because my mind drifts when I'm doing, you know, when you're doing the same thing over mm. and over again, mm. your mind just escapes. And that's the reason I think that's what happens with these colouring books. People are colouring, but their minds are elsewhere and it's clearing and decluttering and all that kind of thing. So it's not about staying between the lines. It's about what your mind is doing when you're, it's like meditation, just, you know, you decluttering mean, the mind, I think. Do you use markers or, or, or crayons? Or? I'm markers. You're a markers girl, and, okay. Um, but I don't do mark. I, I did tell you about my dot to dot. Well, you mentioned yeah. this in the talk. You better explain to our listeners yeah, what this is. Yeah, because I love. Um, my mum got it for me for Christmas. It's a dot to dot. It's not a colouring book. It's a dot to dot book. Where you go and one, yeah, two, every three. Every page is one to one thousand, but it's a dot to dot of famous <laughs> figures. So I have like Mother Teresa and all kinds of people in dot to dot. Did it include the towel thing on her head? Is that? Yes, actually, and <laughs> that's not easy when you. <laughs> <laughs> Seven hundred and fifteen. Seven hundred and sixteen. <laughs> 
So that's how I spent my Christmas this year, <laughs> doing dot to dot. The glamour of it. <laughs> I know. But I know, I do like, um, I'm a daydreamer, you know, so things like that really help me just, you know, instead of sitting on a couch thinking, what's my next idea? That's how I process everything that's going on in my life and what I'm going to write about next. Thank God, because for, for the daydreamers listening, there's, there is great hope. Um, <laughs> or is there? Yeah, well, there is, of course, there is. As you say, gosh, how many countless books later and here we are uh, with Flawed. Tell me a little bit about uh, the book, though, because there are, there, there, the Celestine yes. is, is, the, is the girl at the centre of this yeah. and we're talking about conforming and non-conforming and society and all of the, the, these themes yep. thrown into this book. So give us a feel for it, if you wouldn't mind. It's set in a society that doesn't tolerate imperfection. So if you make a mistake, a moral or ethical mistake, then you're branded flawed. Oh, so it's uh, Facebook. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. <laughs> um, I, and, uh, oh, you've put, you've no, put sorry, me off sorry, now. Sorry, sorry. No, come on. So, so society there is, and branding. Yes, yes. There is a, um, a committee of judges, which is called the Guild. Twitter. <laughs> OK. <laughs> You make me feel very unoriginal here. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> and um, so basically, if you make a mistake, you have to go to the ju- you have to go to this court <laughs> called the Guild, yes. and um, you go through the trial, and they find you flawed, and you're branded flawed in one of five places of your body. They sear your skin, and they sear your skin on basic based on the nature of the crime, isn't that right? That's it, so it yeah. could be your tongue, if you tell a lie, your temple, if you're for a bad decision, and for stealing so from society. Stealing. Well, let's keep going, I've done it. You're forced to take a, if you're stepping out of oh, society. Lying, yes. And um, your heart for disloyalty, your chest. Okay. So, um, meanwhile, uh, Celestine comes along. Yes, and she makes a decision. Uh, it's not necessarily a mistake, but makes a decision that f- causes her to be branded. And so she's forced to live as a flawed member of society, which is a second-class citizen. Um, you have to live by different rules. You have curfews, different diets, di- everything. You know, you're yeah. not... Um, allowed to have the same kind of employment positions. That, yeah, that kind all of the thing. privileges are kind of stripped yes, away. Yes, everything, all luxuries is taken away. And and it's about, I think at that age, you know, with me anyway, you desperately want to fit in. You don't mm. really want to be seen as different, but she's cast out from society and immediately seen as different and branded imperfect. She's she's flawed. And that's what it's about. It's about her journey through that. What, what was the sort of feedback you got from the pre-publishing readers? What were they saying that they liked about it? Oh my God, well, I think it's... What do they like about it? <laughs> they love. Um, I think they just love that it's really fresh. That it's um, very now. I think that it's kind of all the things you've been saying. Yeah, are, mirror are relevant. society yeah, now. Yeah. Um, you know, and people are talking about the dystopia word, and um, I keep saying, "Well, I, I'm." It's kind of I'm writing about a society now. Yes. Everything that's in that novel is. I think that teenagers are going through, that people are going through. I think that we have a very judgmental society. Yeah. Um, and if that's dystopian, well, then the world has become a little dystopian. Yeah. And I think if you look at all the regimes and the governments all around the world, I mean, you, we don't have to look far to see what other people mm. are doing to each other. And there's lots of inquiries and commissions and tribunals and all kinds of things in all countries of the world. And I just wanted to create a society where I just took it that bit, that step further, and. Um, and not only made them, you know, people always finger point and public, publicly shame, but yes. now they're officially a different um, class, like class of society. Right, and and the book that has been optioned for for a movie, isn't that yeah. right? And yeah, two uh, books. So there's two there's in the series, follow-up. Flawed and Perfect. You're very keen to point out it's not a trilogy. Is, is, can I ask you why? Um, b- because I have completed it. It's done. <laughs> yeah, and I think... Um, so people are finished the second book going, I can't wait for... Oh. No, there's definitely two. And okay. the reason for that, well, I have been asked, you know, would you write, will there be a third one, particularly with the movie companies where you want to have more? So, um, no, I have told the story and I want to stick to, I think, you know, flawed and perfect are two sides of the same coin and it very much represents what it's about. Um, I don't want to go any further with it. The, uh, the, the book is dedicated to your dad. It is. Why? Because, um, you know, it's so funny. I have 13 novels and I dedicate them all to different people, but I um, never asked why until it's him. But because I, want it, I wanted it to be him, he, I just felt it was right for him. It's the right story to dedicate to him. Because you love him. Yes. Uh, I presume. But also, it's the right story for him. Yeah. Why? It just is. It's, it's, um, it's very much was in my mind when I was writing it. So it's kind of my little, my little story for him. Uh, the re- I suppose the, it's the reason not that, that I, I'm just surprised you didn't dedicate one to your dad before now rather well, I than have. Before, I have see have. no one talks about that one so why now <laughs> um, so why are we talking about it now you have dedicated yes, books to yes I your have dad. one before yes this is the second to be dedicated so why, well, then, to then, let's rephrase the question why did you go again 
Um, because I found I wanted, there's certain books that I write, you know, and I feel this one's for this person and this one's for that person. And I just felt while writing that, that this was for him. It's a book about dystopian society where people get marked out and shamed. Yeah. We can all read into that, what we will. Yeah, I think there's no point in talking about it anymore. Like, you, you read I the book, you know the story, everyone knows what I'm saying. And you can decide then from, yeah. from yourself once you've read it. But it's not out just yet, is it? Come no, it's out on 24th of March. Do you know what film's really popular in my house uh, for the teenager is uh, Love, Rosie? Really? Yeah, she loves oh, it. Oh, brilliant. Absolutely. She goes, I love that film. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Well, why did you like it so much? Um, it, I thought it was great, actually. I think what they, they made it really cool. They had a fantastic cast, really current, contemporary, cool cast. And uh, it captured everything in the novel, which was, it was moving, but then it was a bit naughty and fun as well. So. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I, re I was really proud of it. And a whole other gener generation are loving it as well. Yeah, is, and a lot of, that's what happened a lot of um, when I was doing events for that book. A lot of teenagers were coming out to the events. So I do have that um, readership already. So hopefully they'll, this will appeal to them. I, I was uh, amused by your comments on Saturday at the talk that you gave, uh, which was talking about book covers. Yeah. And that, uh, was it Poland or, that you said? That, yes, that, yeah. yeah. So you sure your books have have all different themes. Yes, they're obviously yeah. different stories. Yeah. 13 of them, for God's yeah. sake. Uh, but in, I think it's Poland that they insist on, on doing something that kind of irks you. It happens a lot in a lot of countries, but um, they had, it was probably 10 novels and every single cover had a couple a man and a woman hugging and embracing and kissing. So even for the novel that I was over for, which was 100 Names, and it wasn't even a romantic story. I'm like, do you know this isn't a love story? Um, but I think they, they've gone for that P.S. I love you, love Rosie cover that. Yeah. This is really what well. she does. <laughs> yeah. And the problem is then, so when I start to give out about it, people are like, oh, she thinks she's something else. But it's really, you, you want a cover to represent the story. Yeah. Otherwise, people get very confused. And then it goes in the wrong section of a shelf. I remember speaking to... Um, a bookseller and she's like we're putting in you in romance should we move you and I'm like yeah that'd be a good idea <laughs> <laughs> so some of them are you know all of them are love stories some of them are romance some of them aren't like lots of writers that write lots of different things yes um, yeah so that's a bit frustrating and I was also struck by your comments about the, the Germans the Germans love you it's a big place for and me <laughs> and they love you with a, a zeal Oh, it's, that can be a little uh, unnerving sometimes. It's interesting. Like they, as I said at the event, they make things, they bake things, they you know um, bring me loads of gifts. They're very kind, but they come up with these photographs of me that I have never seen of myself ever. I mean, they're not. They're. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they landed a communion photo of me down, and I'd have to sign it. They are really good little researchers, and um, but really, really loyal. To, they're so loyal and um, so supportive. I really appreciate them. So, but they're. Um, yeah, one event, one guy asked me, how would I feel if he called to my house? <laughs> yeah. so, and you'd said, well, what's yeah. the German for 999 <laughs> in, in every sense? <laughs> uh, now, you were talking about your, uh, um, your, your, your son, who's three... Yes, he's three. Sonny. Yes. Um, and I was just, I was reading something about you whereby uh, he, would, he broke his leg or he something. He did, yeah. And, you know, there's something, it's like a dog with a cone on its head. There's something about it for you over the broken oh, leg. It's, That's, awful. it's awful. But he wasn't even two. Sorry, I mean, at this, the time. At the yeah. time he wasn't even two. So and it where, was, how do you plaster a little leg like that? It, well, it was two legs in plaster. Oh no. Up to the waist, down to the ankle. And then there was a bar in between it was horrific like it was really poor little thing did he fall was, off a swing or no he he was running and he when he fell he twisted he broke his femur so they call it like a skiers break oh. um, and it was very unusual for a child to do it so obviously there were millions of questions um, and we felt so bad about it and then we went up to the um what you call it, the hospital bed, and the, the kid right beside us had done exactly the same thing okay. and was the same age. So both parents were oh, so, they were looking at us going, phew. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, it was horrible, you know, it was really tough for him because he's a really active, like seriously active little thing. Um, but but actually doing that helped me to write Flood because in the end he was in his cot and I was terrified because of this big thing he was wearing that if he rolled over he would get stuck because it was so heavy. So I sat beside him for hours. Um, why is this funny, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I sat beside him and writing, you know, so from, you know, when he went to bed at seven till I was going to bed at, you know, 11, that was a lot of writing in the evening and yeah. that's why I wrote it so quickly. You, uh, books wise though, you've got, uh, you've got a ridiculous year. Is it is 2016 a mad year for you? Yes. Or is it is next that year? this year? I don't know. We what. are in 2016 okay, thank you. currently. This is crazy year. This is mad. Um, Flawed is Flawed. out now and I'm going to be promoting that 
really all around the world. And then I'm writing my next adult novel at the moment at the same time, which is called Liar Bird. And that's out in October. And then... And then part um, two? And then part two of this called Perfect will be out this time next year. Okay, so that is insane. And it you've got to travel insane. around, what, the, the world? Like, is that the yeah, States, Europe? the States. I have two trips to the States. Um, I'm going to the LA Times Book Festival, which I'm really looking forward to because I've never been there before. And then I have a convention in um, Vegas. For what? For a young adult convention. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so doing really interesting things really? that I haven't done for a couple of years, yeah. Um, so two trips and travelling around, all around America, different so, states each day. It's going to be interesting. Fascinating, really. Yeah. Um, so kids wise, because obviously you're going to miss them like mad. Oh, yeah. What do you Skype them to death? Or? Yeah, I mean, this is going to be the longest. I've never for the last couple of years, I haven't done these big trips because I've been either pregnant or had babies. Sure. And uh, this is the first time. So, it's, yeah, it's going to be horrific. <laughs> it's going to be snots and tears and everything when I'm leaving. It's going to be horrible. And that's not the kids. <laughs> no, me. Yeah, absolutely yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. But um, it's a great opportunity. You have to have to take it. So I life can. is good. You're, you're happy. Yeah, and... I am. Yes. Really happy. Really busy. Um, you know, you never know. There's, I always think there's going to be plenty of years where I don't have any ideas. So when they come, I just have to grab them and, and write them. So you never know. I might have my break further on. OK, well, let's not do it just just for now. The book is called Flawed. It's by Cecilia Hearn, uh, published by HarperCollins. Cecilia, congratulations on yet another uh, another book from your brain, which is constantly <coughs> fizzing with ideas. And uh, I wish you well on everything you do. Thanks for coming Thank in to see us today. Much. That's Cecilia Hearn joining us in studio this morning. The text number is 51551.